You are good. Come on with it. All the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. All the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. You are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the time. All the time. You are good.
painful. Painful. Oh. You are painful. Great. Great and mighty Lord. You are painful. so painful, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are painful. Great. Great and mighty Lord. There is none like you. <laughs> kind God just happened to be Lord, mine. Like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <coughs> Glory Hallelujah. to God. He's good. Yeah, yeah. he's good. He's good.
got to be sure I thank you set me free I never knew a love I can't forget it I can't forget it I can't forget it I can't forget it The 
Lord is good. I'm not trying to forget. He's been too good to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Nobody like him. Nobody like you, God. Often imitated, but never duplicated. Yes, God. Yes, God. Glory. One of a kind, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Thank God for good equipment. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go down a little bit. Hallelujah. 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 He's good. Yes. Yes, God. I won't forget it, Lord. Hallelujah. All the time. It's messing with me. Thank you, Lord. You're good, Lord. You're I know what that is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We still Lord. win. Yes, we win. We win. I'm motivated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every time something stupid happens, I'm motivated. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sounds all right to me, don't you? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, you're good, Lord. You're good. Thank you, God. You are good, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We ready? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, God. All right, God. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you.
attack, I won't turn back. Yeah. This means war. Yeah. This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. Got your wedding gown on, take them off. Yeah, it's time to fight yeah. with all your might. Yes, God. Hallelujah. God is good. And he is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. When will he come through? Every time. For who? For you and for me. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise well, here she is. Sister Ann. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, I dare you to give me your best praise this morning. Come on, give me your best praise this morning. Oh, glory. If God has done anything for you this morning, you ought to praise him. I'm going to praise him no matter what. I don't care what you're going through right now. Praise him. Woo! Praise your way out. Hallelujah. It's war time, y'all. It's war time. The Satan can't have our families. He can't have our money. Glory to God. We got to take it back, y'all. Glory to God. God is good and he is good all the time. I don't know about you, but I'm stomping on his old crazy head. Come on, let's stomp on his head this morning. Stomp on him. Stomp on him. Stomp on him. It's war time, y'all. It's war time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got the victory, y'all. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. We've got the victory. It's war time. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. It's just a good to be here this morning. I thank God for all of you that are here. God is a good God. Thank God for bringing us here safely this morning. 
Oh, praise God. We could have been anywhere else, but thank God we're in the house of the Lord this morning. Glory to God. It's a blessing to be here. Praise God. I want you to help me welcome our internet audience. Come on, everybody. Let's give them a VLCC welcome. Welcome. Woo! Good to have you. Good to have Glory you. to God. Welcome to our service this morning. Praise God. As you can see, it's war time in here. Glory to God. Praise God. We're coming in against the enemy. Praise God. And we've got victory over the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We'll go overcome us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to say thank you for being this morning. We pray that you will be blessed this morning. And I know you will be blessed. We've been blessed by our praise and worship. Praise God. You will be blessed by a man of God for the word of God. Again, we want to say thank you for viewing us this morning. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Let's give God a praise again for our internet audience this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's got us this morning, y'all. I don't care what it is. God's got you. As our Sunday school lesson demonstrated, God's big hand was like this. Hallelujah. And it had a demonstration of a little person in his hand. God's got us. God's got us. Like Sister Ella said back there, he's got us, but it's, it's up to us to stay in there. Glory to God. You can jump out if you want to, but come on, stay in there. God's got us. God's got you this morning. God's got you. He's got you. He's got you. He's got you. Hallelujah. Oh, well, praise God. Come on, give him some praise one more time. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. If you don't feel like it, give him some praise anyway. When you begin to praise him, you'll feel better. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. As you're praising him, some good is happening. Something good is happening. Something good is happening. Something good is happening. Hallelujah. Woo, praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Where you may be seated, some good is happening to us. Praise God. And I always say something good is happening. And I tell you something good, something good is always happening to me. But I was in Kroger and we were getting ready to pay for my grocery. And this little young lady ran up to give me a big hug. And I said, oh, how you doing? Praise God. She said, may I pray for your groceries? I said, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. I said, I got a coupon. Let, 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 no, I got my coupon. I said, I got a coupon. Let the lady take my coupon off. She took my coupon off. She prayed, paid for my, my groceries. I just thank God. You know, the Lord has you. You never know where God is going to bless you. Glory to God. I was just trying to get my groceries. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And thank God for this young lady. And I just pray many blessings upon her. Glory to God. You never know where your blessing is. See, some good happened to me. Glory to God. And something good has happened to you all. You ought to tell it. You ought to tell of the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. These are our announcements. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to remind you. That this month continually is, the month of October is clergy month. Praise God. We want to bless our pastor and encourage our pastor. We have a scripture for the pastor this morning. It says, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart. We shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3.15. Thank God for the word of God. Thank you, for pa thank you pastor. You are a man after God's own heart. And we want to say thank you. For the wisdom and the knowledge God gives you, you give to us. Thank you, Pastor. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a praise for our pastor during clergy month. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Children's ministry will meet today. Woo! Glory to God. Our children will go back in the back when Pastor gets up to dismiss them. Praise God. They will have a wonderful time. Praise God. I pray that they will have a blessed time. The teachers are prepared. No distractions. It would be a wonderful time in the name of Jesus. Thank God for our children's ministry. Hallelujah. Now, practice for our Christmas program will begin on Saturday, October 29th at 11 a.m. Rehearsal schedules will be available at the first rehearsal. And the first rehearsal, everyone will know their Heart. Praise God. I'm decreeing and, 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 and I'm decreeing and declaring it. I'm speaking. Everybody going to know their part. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So come to the rehearsal October 29th at 11 a.m. Praise God. Praise God. 
Well, that is, well, oh, no, 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 that is our announcement. I want to make, remind you, make your contributions before and after service with your debit or your credit card in our bookstore. Also, you can give on the app, GiveLify, on your smartphones or your tablets. Praise God, praise God. Also, the list for the interfaith care needs is posted in the bookstore as well as the fellowship hall. And as always, and I always say every week, Pastor and I would like to thank you for being a blessing to those in need. You never know when you're going to need a blessing. Praise God. Well, we want to say thank you for blessing those that are in need. Hallelujah. Our regular scheduled services here at the church, Sunday school is at 9 a.m. Our morning worship is at 10 a.m. every second and fourth Sundays, which is today is our children's ministry. woo hoo 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 Praise God. Our teens ministry will be next Tuesday. It's every other week. Praise God. woo hoo that's it, Sister Jennifer. Woo-hoo! Thank God for our teens ministry. Our midweek service is Tuesday at 7 p.m. Thursday, we have a noonday class. And Friday, oh my, we had a wonderful turnout on Friday night for prayer. Praise God. It's, this is what it's going to take, saints. We're going to have, we're going to get on one accord and pray with one mind, one purpose. Praise God. And that's for souls, 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 souls. Glory to God. God will give us souls. Praise God. Give us the heathen, as the word said. We won't give up. We won't stop until we see it, it, it come through. We won't stop until we see it come true. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So come to prayer on Friday at 6 p.m. Well, praise God. That ends our announcements right now. We'd like to meet, greet, and welcome all of our first-time visitors. If we have any first-time visitors this morning, would you please stand to be recognized? Any first-time visitors? Well, praise God, you are here, and we thank God for you. Praise God. Don't give up this morning, saints. God's got us. Remember that illustration? God's got us. He's in his hand. Hallelujah. God's got us. All right. Well, praise God. Everybody stand up, and I want you to put your hands together, and I want you to shout to the top of your voice. Come on. Let's receive our pastor, Pastor Douglas. He got the whole world in his hand. 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 Remember that? Yes. You got something in in, in his hand. Praise the Lord. He got us. He got us. Praise God. It's good to be here. Good to be saved. Amen. And it's good to know the Lord personally. Uh, personal relationship with the Lord. God is good. And I'll keep saying that until everybody's convinced that God is good. And He's good to us. Amen. Hallelujah. And He proves that every day of our lives. We have no reason to have our heads down or be crying and bawling and squalling and all depressed. Look around you. you still better off than a whole bunch of people. Hallelujah. So God is good to us. God hangs around grateful people. He hangs around what kind of people? Yeah. Not complainers. Grateful people. You know, I have my D.C. at the end of every service. Don't criticize, don't compare, and what? And don't complain. And now I got another one, D.B., don't blame. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's going to shorten your conversation a whole lot, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we, we, we were good about passing on this. They did it. It wasn't me. Yeah, no, that's that God mentality. That's part of the fall. We're not under the fall anymore. Man up. Yeah, I messed up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just man up to it. Glory to God. You can get help like that. Glory to God. So it's a good day to hear God speak. I want you to know there is a word in the house today I receive for the people of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, I'm going to let him speak. I hope what I preach convict you. 
Don't leave. After, when I go to greeting time, stay, stay, stay for the message. <laughs> You're in here now. <laughs> I pray a conviction to do better. God is about making us better. Amen? How many want to be on the same page with him? Then hang around for, for, for this word. God has a word for you. You can watch it by internet. Thank you for being a part of our audience. Uh, we know you could have been clicked on any web page, but you chose ours. How you heard about us, I don't care. You, you're here now. And I believe you're going to be ministered to and blessed tremendously by the word of God today. We're going to take a moment and pause here and just greet each other for a minute. We'll come back and pray and get into the word of God. Amen. Amen. His glory shall be seen in 2016. His glory shall be seen in 2016. His glory yeah, shall be seen in 2016. His glory shall.
Praise the Lord. All ye people, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all ye people, praise the Lord. It's so good to know Jesus. Thank God I have a premonition that y'all not going to hell. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just, I was just wanted to verify. Praise God, among God's people. Well, Father, today, here we are. You ordained this moment before that was even a world. We were just a thought in your mind. And you set this day up that we would be here at this time to hear you speak. We know the word you have for this house today is very relevant and very pregnant and important for what you're doing in the earth realm at this time. Thank you that we are submissive to your will. We always want to please you. And Lord, we know that when, you please, when we please you, you please us, oh God. You minister to our needs and you give us the desires of our hearts, oh God. Thank you for all the praise reports of what God is doing as he's being good to his people, oh God. Thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. That's what you do. That's who you are. So today I think in every heart that's here is the heart of good soil. And the word that is spoken today will not fall to the ground unfulfilled, but it shall yield much fruit in the lives and hearts of these your people. And we will leave this place not challenged, but changed in your presence. Holy Spirit, as always, I stand before you as a barefooted priest. Whatever you want to say on today, I will quote heaven. I will say exactly what you want me to say. All I ask you to do one thing, and it's what you promise, confirm your word. And Lord, make thyself known in this house today by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders and miracles may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And we're going to praise in advance, oh God. Everything we see right now by your spirit. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22. The Lord had been impressing upon my spirit for a while that we need, needed to address this area and dig into it and mobilize an army of believers for this end time assignment. Some of you are saying you, you want to be used by the Lord. Well, I got a job for you. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, you don't have to be deep to qualify. The one thing God always looks for is availability. See, God can take somebody with, with no talent if they're faithful. See, all talent come from him anyway, so God can give him talent. I'm a living witness. I was a stutterer. God needed a preacher. So when it was time for me to step out into the call, he just straightened my tongue out. Because God knew I, I, I would be faithful to him. See, God knows you better than you know yourself. God knew you. That, that's why he made you for, for the purpose that he has for you. And can't nobody fulfill your assignment but you. Hallelujah. That's why there's no reason to be jealous of each other and, and uh, why he let you do that and I can't do that. Trust me, yours are just as important. Though somebody sees the nose and the eyes, trust me, if there's no heart pumping, you got a problem. You can't see the heart, but if you, if you don't have one, you got a problem. See, some of the most important ministries aren't, aren't the seen ministries. Is the behind the scenes. And the one I'm going to talk about today is the behind the scenes ministry. That all of us can participate in. From the youngest to the oldest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God began to speak to my spirit here in, in Ezekiel chapter 22. And verse 30. It says, and I saw. For a, a, not some, a man. I was just trying to find one. Now, you know, it's, it's bad when you 
can't find just one. I look for a man, a man among them that should make the hedge, make up the hedge and do what? And stand where? In the gap for me, for the land. Before me. I needed somebody to stand before me on behalf of this land or this nation or this people. He said, but I had a problem. I found none. I was looking for somebody to intercede on behalf of this land, and I could not find one person that put aside their own agenda to intercede for somebody else. See, a lot of times our ministry or our prayers are selfish. They're all about us. And I want you to understand that you're not here for yourself. You're here for some, some, somebody else. Many times our, our prayers are just selfish about my foe and no more. Save my family. And forgot about the nations of, of the world. Let me help you. God is a global God. God is a global God. God is into nations and generations. Nations and generations. God didn't have his son, son come die just for you and your folk. He said that God so loved the what? The world that he gave his only begotten son. For every person he created is what his son died for. That all of us could have the opportunity to make Jesus Christ our Lord and, and our Savior. So sometimes we get narrow-minded in how we pray and, and uh, who, who we're concerned about, but God never, never leaves out anybody. Did you, did, did you know that, that the Bible said that the sun shines on the just? And who else? The unjust? Uh, it rains on the just and the unjust? Do you know that when your yard's being watered and your unsaved neighbor is right next door, he, you, he is, he's getting water too? God didn't, God didn't get prejudiced. I'm just going to water just, just my, my, my born-again believer's yards. Because one of, one of the reasons why he does that is so that he can allow his goodness to attract them to him. He said, with loving kindness, how I what? Drawn them. It's just God's goodness that got me saved. God was being so good to me. I was walking in so much favor, I felt guilty. Not serving God. That's how I got saved. He didn't have to throw me on the ground and, and let me get sick or nothing. He just, he, he just, he just, he just flooded me with goodness. He was so good, I felt, I felt good to not even serving him. That's how I got saved. I got saved by the goodness of God. Not the wrath of God. Not an angry God. A good God is why I'm saved. And God wants all men to be drawn by his goodness. That's why he does that. Have you ever noticed that, that there are unsaved people that, that are still prospering? Matter of fact, some of them prospering better than the saints. Amen. Don't shout, I'm not going to preach it real good. Amen. Hello? Amen. And God wants them to know that I can still bless you while you're still coming to me. You don't even know you need me yet. But one day the light going to come on. You're going to recognize all this you've been enjoying was because of my goodness. Hallelujah. He was good to me. I know I was messing up going, going and coming. Man, I had one, one foot in the head and the other one on up, banana peeling. In the moment, I could just slip right on in. <laughs> God just being good to me. I knew better. I'm a, I was raised in church. I think I was born in church almost. But I just a hellion. That's what the old folks call you. 
They, they weren't nice. <laughs> they call you a hellion. <laughs> Hallelujah. I knew better. And God was merciful, gracious, kind, long suffering. Gave me another shot. Hallelujah. So God's goodness covers all people. But he, he, he makes this, he says here, I look for a man among them that would make up the head and stand the gap before me. Now, if the key word for intercession is for. The key word for intercession is for, F-O-R. Which means that it's always for somebody else. And you have to have a love for God first. And a love for his people. Because see what the Lord showed me. He said many times the people get caught up in their behavior. And don't realize the behavior is only a, is only a product of a, of, a, of a certain nature. Go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians ch chapter 4. By the way. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4. I love the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Beginning in verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to who? Them that are what? Lost. Hello? We were too. Just as lost as a goose in a hailstorm. Lost. Why? It says here in verse 4, here's his why. In whom what? The God of what? This world has what? Blinded the minds of them who what? Believe not. So any unbeliever is just flat out blind. I don't care if it's a rapist unbeliever, murderous un unbeliever, homosexual un unbeliever, a robber unbeliever. They're all blind. And their blindness is what's causing their behavior. Because the God of this world, and you all know, do I have to go through the scripture and just identify this dude? I got some scripture for you to show you who he is. But do anybody here know without me having to tell you who this dude is? Who is it? Yeah. And most places now don't want you talking about the devil. Well, that's the devil right there. <laughs> the. He don't want you to spotlight him. He's the one that's causing all the, all the trouble. You live next door to a neighbor, he's not born again. And then next thing you know, you look on the news and, and your house is on the news because your next door neighbor just shot up his whole family. And you outside on, 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 on town 13 saying, he was a nice person. I never thought he would do that. But see, when you're not born again, you are a puppet in the hand of the devil. And he'll push your butt anytime time he, he gets ready. Nice without Christ is still dangerous. Nice without Christ is still dangerous. Because you don't know what, know what that person to do. Because the God of this world has blinded their mind. People go, oh, don't hate on ISIS. These are young men that are blind. They've been fed a bill of goods. They've been lied to. They really think they're doing a good thing. You got to be blind to strap a bomb on yourself. Come on, somebody. That's not the norm, right? That's not norm, is it? You strap a bomb on yourself and then push the button yourself and blow yourself up. 
All because you've been fed a bill of goods or a lie that te that telling you that, that if, 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 if you die like this, there's some virgins waiting on you. Psych. All that's waiting on me is some flames. <laughs> Hell is hot and the lake of fire is hotter. They're deceived. They're what? Deceived. It said, in whom the God of this world has blinded their minds, those that don't believe. Now go to me to the book of, book of uh, Revelation. We're going to walk back and forth in the scripture here for a minute. We land the found foundation. God loves all people. God is a global God. God is into nations and generations. God loves the man in Cuba as much as he loves you here in the United States. God loves the man over in, in Syria as much as he loves you here in the United States. The people in Iraq, he loves them too. Revelation chapter 20. You see, I, I, I look for a, a man or a, a, a woman. It, and he said, uh, to, to, send, to make up the head to stand the gap, he said, and I couldn't find none. And when you read Isaiah 59 and 10, he said, uh, uh, I was looking for an, an intercessor. And I found none. I found nobody to stand in the gap for. See, they don't know they're lost. We do because we know the word. Revelation, let me find it myself, chapter 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 2. I like this verse. It's, it just it blesses me every time I read it. I just get all happy and stuff. All down to my sanctified toes. <laughs> I love this verse. Look what it says. And, 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 and he laid hold. He, 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 the, the he laid hold. That's, that's talking about Mike. Got to be like Mike. Got to be like Mike. And he laid hold of the dragon, the old serpent, which is what? The devil and Satan. And bound him, what? A thousand years. And look in verse 3. And cast him into the what? People got there is such a place that there you never hit the bottom. You just keep falling and never hit the bottom. How deep is that? <laughs> I don't want to find out. I'm not even curious. Let, 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 let the devil tell us. <laughs> he said he bound him in a bottom left. If it don't have a bottom to it, what that means? There's no end. He, 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 he going to be constantly dropping for a thousand years. And never hit bottom. That's why he's so mad at us. Because he know uh, we won't go with him and, and, and fall in there with him. And we're not going down. We're going up. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that, 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 that's why you're mad. Because <laughs> we, won't, we won't fall for his game. He can't rope a dope for us. We know better. I ain't going out like that. I already saw it. Yo, in. It don't look good. Can you see, can, can you just imagine the bottom just drop out of this floor right here and you keep going down and never hit bottom. And he's going he to be dropping for a thousand years. Don't look good for him. I'm so glad. He deserves it. Good for him. 
Good for him. Good for him. Good for him. Oh, crazy thing. All the hell he's been trying to bring us and give, do, give us and do to us. Good for him. So that, this verse just blesses me. Uh, and the capture of the bottomless pit and set him up. And what? Ooh he sealed the deal. Even if he tried to get out, he couldn't get out. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. I don't sound too enthused. Anybody been attacked in here? Okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just wondering what your enthusiasm was. See, he gonna get his. He gonna get his. Oh Lord, he gonna get his. Oh, you see he is. Oh, hallelujah! Praise the Lord. And uh. And seal, set a seal upon him that what? He should not what? Look what, look, look, look what his ministry ha has been all these years is deception. He's been deceiving the nations. In other words, what? He's been lying to them. He's been lying to us. Come on, somebody. He tried to make the world look so good to us that, 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 that uh, we wouldn't want to be saved. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. And he say he just didn't deceive one or two people. He has deceived nations. Whole nations are walking around totally deceived. Don't have a clue. They're totally wrong. And if not for the sake of some of us, they all would die and go to hell. Go to Psalms 2. Let's find out what our role is in this. If you want a, a title for this series, it's called Intercession. See, when you, when you want what God wants, You'll get what you want. Did, did, you, did, did you catch that? When you want what God wants, you'll get what you want. See, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, I think that's chapter 3 at verse 9, it said, we are laborers together with God. How can two walk together if they would be agreed? So see, when you understand What's motivating a person's behavior, you have no reason to hate them. See, we, we don't like the homosexual lifestyle, but we still love the person. Because God loves the person, they just deceive. Two of the same kind can't make nothing different. Two men can't make a, a baby. Hello? And two girls can't make a baby. That's deception. They've been fed a lie that this lifestyle is acceptable. And try to push it off on us to make us think it's acceptable. But no, we, no, we, we know the truth. God made male and what? Female. A man that findeth a wife, a female wife, not a male wife. Hello, somebody? No, 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 nobody wants to talk about that either. Well, you can't talk about it. You might offend somebody. It's better to offend them than let them go to hell. You know something inside you saying that something's wrong with this. But when you are not born again, the devil will feed you a bill of goods and deceive you and make you think it's all right. 
It's not all right. In the Old Testament, they stoned you to death. It was punishable by it was punishable punishable by death. You better stay in the closet. <laughs> you come out, you are dead. That's how they that's that's how they did it back then. God God wasn't playing. They didn't they, they, they didn't play like that. And that's saved nations right now, right now. Unsaved nations. You better not let them know you like that. They will take you out. We in America, we are democracy. We're we, we, we in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And then we have leaders that's pushing this lifestyle. In the White House. Let's just go all the way, all the way to the top. In the White House, pushing this lifestyle. I don't care what color they are. It's against God's morals, and they'll be judged for it. Why would God take her for a man that got dropped into a lion's den? Because what that king was trying to get him to do was in violation of what God had said. And God backed him up in a lie then and gave them lies lockjaw and made them a, a pillar for him all night long. Why would God back up three young men who refused to bow their knee because it was in violation of God's word and God's, God's order because they stood for right and what God is in, in, even though the king made a decree. But if a king's decree defies the word, you go with the word. Why do you think God got Pete out of jail that night? When you stand for God, God will stand for you. If you don't stand for, if you, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We don't want to offend nobody. It's better to offend them now so they can get it right. Then let them just go to hell. Because the scripture says, if you know and don't tell them, their blood is on your hands. Well, trust me, I'm a 24 hour job just myself. I don't need nobody's blood on my hand. So I will tell you, that is not right. That is not according to the scripture. God hates that lifestyle, and I don't care what they tell you, you are not going to see him in paradise living like that. We have become so permissive. We, we got a watered down gospel now that everything is accepted. When the Lord understands. God's morals never drop. God's standards never drop. I don't care what generation, I don't care if it's 5,000 years ago or right now, his, his standards have not changed. If God would drop a high priest down and, and let him drop dead in the, in the Holy of Holy because he came in there with sin in his life, he hadn't changed. If that high priest went into, into that Holy of Holies, he had bells on the end of his, of his, of his, of his, of his, of his garment, and what they would do Tradition said they would tie a rope around his waist. And when he went, went to that Holy of Holies, and if that was sin in his life that he hadn't already uh, 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 repented of and, 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 and did sacrifice for, when those bells stopped ringing, they knew homeboy was gone. So all they do is just pull on the rope, pull him on out and say, next. God don't play with holiness. Now, 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 now I'm about to go old school. I, I came from, from, from a background where they said holiness or hell. You got you, you to gotta be holy. You got to live holy. That's, that's how they raised us. 
Now there's no, nobody talking about holiness. Holiness doesn't mean what? Separation from sin unto God. There ought to be a dis- difference in our life than the, than the sinner's life. In our sin, see, we're the light of the world. The Bible says that our lives are read like a book. The best witness you can give is demonstration. Lord have mercy. The best witness you can give is demonstration. Live it. Anybody can talk it. But how many walk in it? We are the light of the world, a city that is sitting on here that cannot be hid. People are looking at our lives. That's how they know who God is by how we live it. Now, what pictures do they see when they look at you? The Bible says, I always make this, make this comparison. The Bible says that uh, on that narrow path, the one that's right, you see every now and then. You run into somebody on the same road with you. But on that broad path, it's shoulder to shoulder. Now, if you feel, if you feel like you're being crowded out, <laughs> you're on the wrong road. See, eagles don't flop. Chickens do. Eagles don't have a problem standing alone. Eagles don't eat dead meat. Eagles' youth are renewed every seven years. They pluck their feathers off and their talents and, and whole works. And they do a renewal every seven years. That youth is renewed. See, but that's what the Bible got that from. Our youth is renewed like an eagle. An eagle have no problem standing, going to the highest point and perching right there and then looking at the whole picture. Not like a chicken with his head down, the next thing you know, he's lunch. <laughs> right? Because somebody done grabbed him and then did that with that neck. And popped it. And then he do, do, do the Holy Ghost shout for a while. And then he on the plate. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road when he saw the church? <laughs> he, knew, he knew he was going to be what? On, on, on. I want a plate, a, a chicken dinner for sale. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God we're not into that. We are free. I came out of that. By the time you buy all the ingredients, you could just give the person the money. And the same folks buying the dinners anyway. <laughs> oh, God. We learn better. We do better. God's standards never change, ever. So an unsaved man, the Bible says he's what? He's deceived. Now go with me to, to, to the book of Psalms, chapter, chapter 2. Am I helping? See, that's a song I sing sometimes. That's a song I sing sometimes. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. Oh, I'm so glad they prayed, took the time to pray. Somebody prayed for me. One of them was my grandmother. When I come home from Texas, I go, go, go home to visit. She said, Junior? That's what they call me, Junior. Even I'm, I'm, I'm the third, but they, they call me Junior. Junior, grandmother praying for you. Yes, ma'am. Get back in the car, head back to Texas, fire up. <laughs> but here's what I learned you can't outrun prayers I don't care how fast you are 
They will catch up with you. They caught up with me too. And instantaneously, God took the drugs, the alcohol, and the cigarettes away. Instantaneously, I've never had a desire to taste for them since. See, I, I might have been fooling her, but I wasn't fooling God. And I was her, her favorite because, you know, I, I, I had a speech impediment. And so she would always talk to mama and let me get, get my way on, on some things. <laughs> she always said I, I was her, her preacher. And I'm saying, I hear you. <laughs> but if I got anything to say about this, that ain't going to happen. Okay. But she saw me. You know, as a kid, I go on the back porch. Anybody remember porches? Yes. Yeah. I go on the back porch. She had, you know, had the had that wash out there yeah. with that little thing you slide the clothes through. <laughs> All right, and then had them two tub with with, with the bluing. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Those were the days, weren't they? I ain't think about them. I ain't going back to my let us all go back to the old, old, old land. You, you just gone by yourself. I ain't studying you. I go got her on that back porch. We had a had a had a, a, a chicken chicken pen out there. Well, well we raised chickens and and uh, um, they go to go to the uh, feed feed store and buy the little chicklets or the little, little bitties as they call them. And they bring them and they raise them, you know. And I go out there on that back porch. And I preach to the chicken. And my message, I only have one, one sermon. The five wise and the five food is virgin. And I preached to them that morning. And we'd be ringing their necks that evening. But I preached to them chickens and my neighbors would, heard me, would hear me. That's how loud I was preaching. I'm just a kid. I, I, I didn't know I was already walking into what I was already supposed to do. And then I got exposed to sin. And the preacher left me. I went to the club. <laughs> like me and some other of you here in, in the house. Some of you went to the front door, some went to the back door. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I... I went to the shanty and the, the penthouse here and here. The red rooster. The red room. Yeah. Somebody, somebody know what I'm talking about. Right, right. Screaming. Yeah, come on. Yeah. yeah. Look what the Lord has done. <laughs> We're living testimony. God can save anybody. Because we was enjoying our sin, weren't we? I ain't, ain't going to lie to about I was so miserable. I wasn't miserable. I couldn't wait till the club opened. I just found something better. Something better, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. If I had all the money, I spent out there doing that foolishness. The church would be paid off. Hallelujah. Some things were necessary for our development, our growth, and for our ministries. Look here now. You found Psalms 2? Now let me find it for 2. Verse 8. What does it say? What's the first word? See, God said, I need you to get outside of yourself and stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about all those people out there in, in the world who have been blinded. They've been deceived into believing a lie. They have no clue. 
they're already, they are crowded. They're, they're rushing in, into hell by the thousands. Somebody dying right now going to hell. Somebody else just died going to hell. Oh, yeah. And somebody else just died going to hell. The, the Bible said that hell is enlarging itself. Why would hell have to enlarge itself if, that, if it didn't need to make room for, for, for more people? And the Lord said, because they are blind, they don't know they, 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 they are wrong. They don't know they're lost. And if somebody, I look for a man, just one, that would make up their heads and stand in the gap for them before me, he said. Because when you read that next verse after that 30th verse, that 30th verse, that, th that 31st verse said, so I destroyed him. Because I couldn't find a man. I let my wrath go out and, and destroy him. Because I was trying to find somebody that would, uh, would come and intercede on their behalf and, and, and argue that case before me. And I couldn't even find one because everybody was busy with their own agendas. Busy with their own stuff, their own stuff. It's all about me. I, I'm doing this. I'm busy. I got all this going on. See, what I found out, when I, when I prioritize his business, he takes care of mine. He makes all my stuff work out. One of the things I always pray, those who come know this, I always pray, by the end of the prayers, I say, Lord, and I thank you that because we've been taking care of your business, you take care of us, so I thank you that right now you are perfecting those things that concerns me. See, what I'm willing to sacrifice for his business, it moves him not to do some things on my behalf with my business. But if all I'm consumed with just me and my business and not concerned about his business, all I have is my business. Now watch this now. In God's kingdom, there are no A wards. There are only rewards. And the Bible teaches this. I was, I was studying this. The Bible teaches that we're going to have to stand before the, 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 the judgment seat of Christ. Now, that's the believers. That's us. The white throne judgment is not for us. That's for the ones I'm talking about we need to be praying for. That's for us. The, what Jesus' judgment is, a, is, is where we go. Let, let's say this. Jesus' judgment is the, is the Christian's academy rewards. That's where you go to find out what rewards you're going to receive in God's kingdom and what your position will be in his kingdom. Just because you might be a preacher down here doesn't mean that that's your position there. It might be some little lady that's been spending her, her, her life just interceding. I remember at, 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 at uh, Parker Court, had several people call me and tell me that the pastor, God put it on my heart that my job is just to pray for you. I said, thank you so much. That was their job, to pray for me. Not even members of the church. We were on television at the time, and they watched the program all the time. And they called them, God, God told us, our job is just to pray for you. I said, thank you so much. See, nobody's in this by themselves. The reason why we say right now, because somebody prayed for us. We had some mama names. Come on, somebody. We had some mama names that said, no, devil, you can't have my child. You're not going to take my child to hell. They stood in the gap. They made it to hell. They warred for us. And boy, we was manifesting some crazy behavior, too. We was cutting up. Lord, we was cutting up. Tell me about some, some heathens.
And only thing our behavior did was motivate them more to keep praying for us. And they, as old folks say, they, they have prayed us through. <laughs> they prayed us through, glory to God. Well, just like they prayed us through, these people need to be praised. You got some more, I got that. Every time you come to the family, he, he, he's the one that's always drunk. And all you do is complain about his drunkenness, not realizing this man is lost. That's a soul that needs to be saved. Yeah, Stop looking at their behavior and begin to pray for a soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a reward system. In the Bible says, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter, 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 chapter 3, it says that when we stand before the white throne judgment, it says all of everything we've done is going to be tried by fire. And, that, and, 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 and what's... what's the standard is going to be, what did you do that mattered? To him. What did you do that mattered to him? Lord help me. Casa sister. Busy don't mean you're right. Is what you are doing something that matters to him? And he said, all of us, everything we're going to be doing is going to be tried by fire. And then what's left, if anything, is what you would be, you would be rewarded for. And 2 John chapter, chapter 1, verse 8, it's on, 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 only one chapter, it says, uh, John said, see to it that, that, that you get the full measure of reward. So if that's a full measure, that means what? It could be a partial measure. And your position on earth does not dictate your position in heaven. It's what are you doing that matters? Lord have mercy. To him. What did he call you to that you are doing? That matters to him. We already discovered right here that what matters to, to a God is what? Souls. Souls. See, you start praying for, for the world, and this house will get filled. People need a place to come. You, you can sit and complain about, well, it, 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 where are the people at? You can complain about it in, in the chair, but then what are you doing? That's causing them to come. How many hours you spend on, on your face praying for souls? We, we already got too many church transplants. That folks, that, that's folks to tell from church to church to church. Don't like that, go to another church. Don't like that, go to another church. Don't like that, go to another church. In the front door, out the back door. See, what, 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 what you want is virgins. Somebody fresh off the street, ain't never been in church, unsaved, don't know, don't know nothing. You come in and train them and Teach them and raise them up in the church and they'll be faithful. You got church transplant, they, they already have an agenda. And if your agenda don't measure up to theirs, then they go somewhere else. Instead of getting in under the, under the agenda, that, agenda that's already in place. Well, I just think I'll be run like this. Well, they didn't do, do it like that at the other church. That's why we have a new members class. And we use the book called Spiritual Authority. To give, give you some insight on how this thing's supposed to run. How God sees leadership. You don't want to bring baggage. You want to be open. To be planted so you can grow and flourish. But my last pastor wasn't like that. Well, why'd you leave him? <laughs> Are you hearing? So in, 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 
Instead of creating an environment of unity, you're creating an environment of discord. And the Bible said God hates a person that sows discord among the brethren. And I'm the curve. I don't think I'm doing like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, I got you. Mm-hmm. I'm marking you. See, I hate that. I always say, if you don't like it, leave. Well, I take my money with me. <laughs> Have I not made it clear who the source is? God is my soul, people of God. That's why I can talk like I do, bold and strong, with not a, without apologizing. Amen. The source is God. God wants the truth known. Amen. Truth makes you free. You can't grow just being told, like going to a store and uh, you, you try on this, this, this garment dress or whatever, a suit, and, and that the person says, oh, you sure look good. Now they lie. Ask me. They got an agenda. They trying to make a sale. I don't trust them. You better know what you look good in. I think somebody with you that 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 won't lie to you. What did the man say? You can't handle the truth. <laughs> Tell me the truth. Don't ask me. If you don't want to know the truth, don't ask me. I don't tell you that that for me. If you don't want, if you if you don't want the truth, don't ask me. I'll smile and tell you. I'll be smiling the whole, the whole time. No, I don't think that's gonna work there. You need to probably, probably try something else over, over here. They, they lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> they out, what's, their, what's their agenda? Money. Right. They motivated by the money. Right. So they tell you anything. Yeah. They, they know them colors don't match. My, 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 my wife, I tell you, when, when, when I go in, in, in a store called God is a blessing with, a, uh, with, with an eye for colors, when I go in the store, the salespeople just step back. Because when they try to put stuff, I said, no, no, that, that, that don't look good with that. <laughs> so they just step back and let me put myself together. And then they, then they even tell me, why don't you come work for us? You're not going to have me look like a clown? <laughs> I'm in front of you. You're looking at me right now. You're not just hearing what I'm saying. You're looking at me right now. Whoo. Why did Pastor put them colors together? <laughs> Hello? My stuff got to be right. My wife can handle the truth. She'll ask me, baby, how, how does this look? And I'll tell her. You think I should put this with this? Well, no, baby. What else you got? (laughs) Oh, I done struck home now. (laughs) It's it's a pushing going on over here. (laughs) You can't handle the truth. Hallelujah. He says, here are people who don't even know they lost. He said, ask me for the who? Who are the heathen? The lost people. He said, ask me for the look, 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 look. As your what? Inheritance. In other words, when you get to heaven, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, he's going to pull out your transcript or your record. And all these souls 
that came into the kingdom because of your praying, your standing the gap, he's going to bring all of us down. Here's what you are responsible. Here's what you accomplished. Here's what you did that mattered for me. You had no idea your praying was causing these people to come to Christ. You had no idea this nation was coming to Christ because of what you put. You had no idea. And because of you, here are these souls in heaven right now with me. And because of that, here's your reward. You get a full measure. I listen to this guy talking about this guy that uh, was in, went to Bible college for two years. He felt like that's what he's supposed to have been doing. And that third year, they accused him of impropriety with a young lady, which was untrue. But then they kicked him out. So he was farming around trying to figure out what his, what his purpose was. And the Lord said, I never call you to Bible college. I call you to the military. I call you to be a Navy SEAL. See, what office are you in right now that you haven't been called to? You're just doing what's convenient. And he said he shared story after story of how God delivered him and his men. So one time, his phone automatically dialed his parents to pray for him while he was in the middle of, of, a, of a battle. And God delivered him and all his men supernaturally. See, we all, all of us, all of us are not called to the five, five full minutes of gifts. Some are called just to, to, the pot, to, pop, to be a, a politician. Some are called to be an accountant. Some are called to be a teacher. He called him to the military. Why? You need a good military. Hello? Else somebody going to take your nation over and, and, and make, make you a slave? We're still one of the greatest military mites on the planet, bar none. That means what? Somebody up in their position know what they're doing. They've been called to that. That's why we sometimes, sometimes we, we, we put our cells and bonds in our children too because we've been given a, a status quo of what we're supposed to be doing. You come out of high school and you go to college. That might not be the call for you. All right, Pastor, you, you can't be saying you, you need the education. You need the education in line with what God is calling you to. And then we push them and push them, and they're unhappy, unhappy. They're just doing it because you pushing them, but they ain't a bit more into it. Because they know that's not what they're supposed to be doing. They don't, they don't know why, but they, they just know that's not what I've been called to. Everybody's not called to go to college. Now, don't say don't, don't, don't go, to, go to school. Don't say the pastor told, 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 told you not to go to college. <laughs> there are a lot of folk in college right now don't even know why they're there. Because they have no clue what their purpose is. We've got to train ourselves and our kids to hear the voice of God at an early age. So we can know what the rest of God will have us go in. I started out going to college. I didn't finish it. But I'm not, but I'm not a bad preacher. Hello, somebody. That call was on my life. I had to do what God told me to do. Men ought to rather obey who? God than men. People got one more scripture. Mark 11. 
So what did God say? Ask me for who? The heathen. For what? Our inheritance. And what? The other part of the earth is our possession. Why? Because God said, I want souls, but somebody got to pray them in. Now, let me clarify. Let me clarify this. Once and for all. Let me clarify this. Once and for all. Go with me to the book of uh, Mark 11. Let me find it myself. Am I happy? Mark 11, verse 17. We're going to do some things that matter to him. Want to be wonderful, wonderful to see all of our loved ones saved? All of them. But somebody got to plow. Got to break up that fire ground. Plow in the spirit. See, that's, that's, that's what warfare is about. That's, that, that, that's, 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 that's what your trouble is. The devil don't want nobody saved. Let's clarify this. Mark 11, 17. And he taught saying unto them what? Is it not written, and, and, and it is written, and I, I'll show you what's at. It's in Isaiah. It is written. What's, what's not written? My house? So the proper name for this place you're sitting in is a house of prayer. What's the least amount of thing going in most churches? It's not praying. Entertainment, drama, foolishness, chicken sales. <laughs> Gumbo. <laughs> I'm saying what I know. My grandma and man, but, 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 but they, they make a big pot of gumbo and they, make, they sell bowls of gumbo and, and uh, have them fish fries yeah. and sell those, uh, those uh, apple tart turnovers they had another name for, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and, they, and they, that, they just sold. The purpose was lost. God said he kicked out what? The money changes. God is scared to start beating on people. To get out of here. You lost the purpose of the house of God. It's the house of prayer. The main thing that will be going on in this house, in this place right here is prayer. All everything else is secondary. And how hard is it to get people to come out? Just even, just, just even for one hour on a Friday night, Friday evening. And we use work, and some do have, have to work, but some don't, it's not working. They're just at the house. Excuses are the questions of the uncommitted. The Bible says, and when they were together and they were on one accord, then the power of God moved. When will you, when will you put what you're doing secondary to what God wants to do? For, could, what, 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 what he told those disciples when, when he came back and found asleep? Could not you watch for just what? One hour? By 715, we pretty much through. But everybody got this good, well, well. But see, you, you don't have the heart of God about souls. 
I want to see nations saved. I want to see Al-Qaeda and ISIS this, this mountain because all of them got saved. But somebody got to pray. Why? Because the God of this world has what? He has blinded the minds of them that do not believe. They are blind. They are deceived. They don't even know they lost. And unless somebody pray, unless somebody get the heart of God and do what matters to him, when you stand before the judgment of Christ and he starts going through all your stuff that you did and test it against the fire, by the end of the day, all you'll be able to say is, it's good to be here. I made it. <laughs> when it comes down to the rewards that many will enjoy, John talks talk, talk about a full reward. Bob talks about a crown of righteousness and all these other crowns. Reward, rewards, rewards. He, he even says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, uh, the one that planted and the one that water it. See, who have you witnessed to lately? The Bible said the one that planted and the one that water, he said, they shall receive their reward. There's a reward when you share Christ with somebody. God keeps telling. He got this, he got this tally sheet, this, 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 this book on you. And when, he's, when you stand for him, he can open that book up and say, all right, here's all, okay. All right, here's everything you, you did that mattered. Here's all you did that didn't matter. So we just wipe all that aside. And then that doesn't matter. You find one item. No, I want to have, I want to have so much stuff on my matter side. Because that, that determines your position in his kingdom. See, I said we're going to, we're going to rule and reign with him. But the, but the, but the, but the office, of, uh, offices of position is going to be determined by him based on what you've done down here. Now, people of God, you don't make no money watching football <laughs> unless you're betting on the game or something. I rebuke you. <laughs> oh, I rebuke you big time. I pray Holy Ghost conviction all over you. May you have no rest until you stop it. Boy, we get mad when this team lose. Oh, and my team today lost. Why did it happen? Why didn't you just put somebody else in there? You ain't getting paid. Why not take that time and, and go before God for a while and start calling out names of nations? Call out some of your loved ones that you know not saved. I look for a, just one. I couldn't find one. Now let's go over to Go over to um, Ezekiel chapter 22 again. And let's shut this down for, for, for this session. I want to put something on, on, on your mind. Your life can't be just all about you. You're not here about you. You're here about somebody else. I pray for you every day. Every day I pray for you. Every day. I pray for your maturity in the spirit. Because we, we in spiritual warfare. You got to be able to stand in the spirit against the wiles of the devil and the foolishness he come at you with. Every day I pray for you.
You can, you can tell your neighbor, I, I, I got one person praying for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you matter to God. God didn't save you to lose you. He saved you to use you. Lord have mercy. God didn't save you to lose you. He saved you to use you. Somebody got to stand the gap. He made me your shepherd. It's my job to lift you up. Keep back the wolves that are trying to take you out. You matter to him. You matter to me. That's why I pray for you. Look at this now. The 31st verse in that 22nd chapter of Ezekiel. Therefore, have I what? Yeah. I poured out my indignation Upon them. What else? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and? Because I couldn't find one person that would argue that case before me. Everybody had their own thing going on. And it was all about them and not about somebody else. I come today to say, can God get some intercessors in this house? Can God count on you to do that which matters? And what matters to God is what? Souls. And when you're busy bombarding heaven about souls, you find yourself just start working out. It just start coming to pass. This thing just start happening. It's just you go, wow, I wasn't even praying about that. I'm praying about something else. But yeah, but see, God saw you busy with his business, so he's taking care of yours. I'm one of the ones he can count on. I'm here for somebody else. I want to see. All your kid folks say. I want to see ISIS. Oh. All these, uh, well, whatever, all the names they got, there's a bunch of names. Not, uh, all the Muslims. They need to be saved. They don't know they're lost. They think they're all right. The Jehovah Witnesses. Come on, somebody. They have been what? Deceived. And the deceiver hadn't been bound yet. He's still on the loose. So the blinders got to be removed so they can see. I've been set up to fail. The devil trying to get me to go to hell. But I ain't going out like that. Somebody pray for me. I got the light came on. I can see. I once was blind, but now I see. But 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 they're not going to see unless somebody pray for them before him. Have I helped you any? Would you stand, please? Hallelujah. It's about souls. I'm just reciprocating what happened to me. Somebody prayed for me. And kept praying. My grandma, every time I talk, every time I go home, she said, Junior, we're about to pray for you. Yes, ma'am. I was always very respectful. But I was still bent on doing what I wanted to do. But one day that prayer caught up with me. That hook was in my jaw. Reeled me right on in. Been in it ever since. And look, people, God, the way God does it, he makes you think you made up your mind. But the heart of the king is 
in God's hand, right? And then it also says he put what the desire and the ability in a man to do what he needs to do. Hallelujah. Anybody not born again? I know we're the house of most believers, but we don't, we don't want to just assume nothing. Anybody out of fellowship, fellowship with, with the Lord? You've been challenged. The devil's, there you go, playing a numb on you. It's called deception. And he makes sin look good. And it does for a season. Ask that young man that, that wound up in that uh, pig's sty, product of son. Oh, he had it going on for a season. Then the bottom dropped out. But what happened when he started coming home? The father saw him? Did he scold him? No. Open arms. Kill the fatty calf. Got the, got, the, got the robe out and the ring, the shoes. Let's have a party. The one that was what? Lost. Found himself. Made his way on back home. So if you're out of fellowship with the Lord, it's a good day. Get it right. Maybe you don't have a church home. Psalm 92 says, they that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in his courts. You can't flourish if you're not planted. If you don't put that plant into some ground somewhere, it's going to die. You can't increase unless you plant it somewhere. You need to be planted in a good church. Amen. One of the best churches on the planet, bar none. Right. Amen. I'm saying come plant yourself in this house. It's a good house. You're going to grow here? We'd love to have you. It said, and then in the next verse, it said, and even in, in that old age, that, that they, they were still bringing forth fruit and flourishing. Glory to God, hallelujah. You just keep on increasing. You need to be planted. You need to find a church somewhere where you can, you can, be, you can plant yourself and be there so you can be trained and instructed, taught the things of the Spirit so your life can matter and you'll be doing the things that matter to, to him. we love to have you. Maybe you're just being challenged. You've been praying and standing, but now you need, you know, you, you just need somebody that's the same thing with you, bless God. You've been standing, bless God, and enough is enough. I'm going to give me, give me some more help. Eyes here. That's what I'm here for. I stand with you. I believe God will do it for you. Hallelujah. But if you're not born again, or you out of faith with the Lord, is that baptism in the Holy Spirit? Need a church home? I just need prayer. In Jesus' name, come now. It's your time. I serve a God of miracles. I serve a God of miracles. I serve a God of miracles.
Case in part. Case in part. Case in part. God's deep. She shared with me about her son. I'm sure she'll she, 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 she mind, mind me sharing it. So her son work, was working on the job, paying him almost $200,000 a year. She called her mom and the Lord told me to give this job up and go help prisoners come out of prison. And he quit that job. And that's what he's doing. He said, I believe that's the call on my life. And that's what he's been doing. Is helping men coming out of prison because that's what he was doing. He was, he was doing what matters now. See, he's doing what matters now to him. See, and you got to know to walk away from a $200,000 job. But when it's God that's saying do it, you do it. You don't care what, what you're giving up. The Bible said when he the Bible said when those disciples, Peter, James, saw the drought of fish that, was, that they caught, it said they dropped their nets. They gave up the fishing business because the Lord said, I'm going to make you fishermen of men. The safest place is in the will of God. You can't let dollars be the only thing that motivates you. The call is more valuable than a dollar. And when he calls you to, he will sustain you in it. I was making good money. I want the highest paid on my job. The president would come, would come and stand by my machine and we just hang out and talk together. He would have me do, 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 do a job that no, nobody else could do. 
Give me days off from work because he, because it was those part of I, I put an apartment that, that was valued over twenty five to thirty thousand dollars a piece, and they couldn't afford to scrap them. So they, they would even bother me about a production quota. Just make sure you get it right. God calls me to full time ministry. What I'm gonna do? Obey God. I walked away from it. And the first year I, 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 I walked away, my finances went shoom. I made $25,000 less that year. But after that, they went up. And they've been up. And God been supernatural sustaining us ever since. When you obey God, he becomes your source. Now it matters. Hallelujah. It's time to give. Hallelujah. Our largest crowd should be on Friday nights. We're all on one accord. We're praying for nations, people of God. I didn't want to go to hell. I don't want nobody else to go. You get rewarded for what matters to him. He might have been making $200,000 down here, but what matters to God is every, every soul whose life is changed as a result of him. You can't put a price on a soul. Trust me, God going to sustain him too. Watch. He ain't going to worry about nothing. The money going to keep on coming. Keep on coming. Psalms 112. Psalms 112. Psalms 112. I'll never be broke. Not an option. I want to show you something here. Parents. Since you got children, may as well enjoy the ride and see what's going to happen with them because of raising them in the house of God. Look in verse 2. Psalm 112, 2. Well, let's start in verse 1. Let's make it a complete thought. Verse 1. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord. Oh, that's the best y'all can do? Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Blessed is the man. Lord have mercy. That fears the Lord. Uh, uh, that what? That light it? Greatly in what? Or his word. You get excited about the word. Oh man, the word, the word. I'm so excited I'm coming to Sunday school every Sunday morning. And I'm bringing my children. Put a plug in it right there for you. <laughs> Look at verse 2. His seed shall be what? Up on the earth. Lord have mercy. The generation of the upright shall be what? Blessed. Your seed. Your children. The ones you had to pray through. Still praying. <laughs> he said. God's going to make your seed mighty upon the earth. And the upright, who is that us? Up. We upright, right? We're we doing what's right. We shall be what? Blessed. 
So your seed is blessed, you blessed, your children blessed. There's a whole lot of blessing going on. Amen. Watch this now. Double meaning on the seed. Not just your children, but what you sow. It's going to cause mighty things to happen in, in your finances. The money just keep on coming. You receive that? Then bring it in the house. Love. I believe I believe I believe I believe I believe I believe I Two hundred and about seventy-five thousand cashier's check. Cashiers check. Hint, hint. Father, we decree, declare that this house, this building, is paid off now in Jesus' name. That we bind you in Jesus' name, command you to take your hands off of God's people's finances. Go, Mrs. Baby, called the money to come in now in Jesus' name, and all who agree said. Father, we lift the gift of love and great appreciation. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to give to the kingdom of God. We honor you when we bring our increase to you, our tithes and our offerings. We thank you, Father, God, that our seed will cause mighty things to happen in our finances. Increase everything paid for for supernatural money manifest in our lives. Thank you, Father, that the money just keep on coming in Jesus' name. And thank you for all the souls that's coming to the kingdom because of it. Amen. And all who agree said. I messed that up, didn't I? And when they gave, they say, they gave praise. That's the one, that's the one. <laughs> you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. She got something else to say. <laughs> Praise God. Sister Ann. <laughs> you may be seated. Praise God. There it is. You got it. Praise God. Well, what about the word of God this morning? Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Lord, Lord, use me as an intercessor, Lord. Help me. I want to be an intercessor, Lord. Yes, find my purpose. Find each one of our purposes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, it's praise report time. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on, put your hands together, put your hands together. Let's receive this beautiful young lady, Sister Helena Hubbard. All right, 
Catalina. And Brother Marcus. God. Come on, girl. Tell, see, I told you how to tell it, the goodness of the Lord. Tell it, girl. Tell it. She's trying to tell me. But it's too much. Go tell I it. I asked Sister Ann to tell it. Mm. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to uh, give God honor to God. And Pastor, I want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Yes, you are a mighty, mighty man of God. And I just thank God that God blessed my husband to direct us here to be under your, 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 your uh, leadership. And um, real quick, God be the Lord. <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, the Sunday after the banquet, you uh, said that God talked to you in your, in your prayer time, and you mentioned that because we blessed you, that God said that we were going to be blessed, and it wasn't going to take a long time. Yeah. Uh, that Later that week when I got home, well, uh, you know about the house in Baton Rouge. The yes. members don't know about uh, us. Our house was flooded in Baton Rouge, and we didn't have... Uh, we had homeowner's insurance, but we didn't have flood insurance because we weren't in the flood zone. Long story short, we've been paying out of pocket because FEMA won't pay because we live here instead of Baton Rouge. Okay. Long story short, uh, we've been trying to pull funds and stuff together for the house to put, uh, to put the house back together. Um, you stood here and you said that God is going to bless us yeah. because we blessed you. When I... Um, <laughs> mm. Glory. That yeah. later that week, I think it was Wednesday, the Tuesday or Wednesday, go to the mail. Mm -hmm. There's a $500 check in the mail. Just All right. The, <laughs> the house. All right. Um, and then I, I kept, I, I called my mother, um, God bless her, but she's been, I don't even know where to start. Um, Marcus, go, he works here during the, during the week. Every weekend, if you haven't seen, been seeing him here at church for a while, every mm -hmm. weekend, Marcus leaves on Friday to go to Baton Rouge to work on the house. Mm -hmm. He comes back here Sunday. So he's been going back and forth working on the house. Yeah. But when he's in Baton Rouge, he'll call and he'll say, Helena, make sure you go to church and you pay my tithes. All right, I said, all, right. Well, honey. all right, all right, my brother. <laughs> I'm like, honey, uh, and I think about what you said, uh, what Sister Angie said about the checkbook, baby, we, we, honey, we got more, more bills than we have left yeah. money. We got yeah. Marcus would call and he'd say, Helena, pay my tithes. All right. Because I'm not working. Okay. Um, and I, I, the last, I, followed, I obeyed my husband. A part of me wanted to say, honey, we got these bills that need to be paid. Yeah. I'm not working. Mm -hmm. We're spending money on this house in Baton Rouge that we're not even living in. Mm -hmm. Marcus said, pay them. Yeah. Pay my tithes. Yeah. I, yeah. I paid the tithes. Yeah. Woo! Set up a GoFundMe account. Next thing you know, the GoFundMe account is just dinging. It dings when people are donating towards your, your, yeah. Yeah. Okay. towards oh, your, God. your, yeah. Your fundraiser, so that's coming in. Okay. I sent an email to my family members. I didn't hear anything, asking them for help or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, told my mother, and she helps out so much. She kept calling. I said, I want to talk to her. I want to talk to her. She kept calling. I said, I want to talk to her. I finally answered the phone that she called about the eighth time, and she says, I've been trying to reach her just to let you know that I went ahead, the, the Home Depot, whoever it was, just uh, uh, granted her an increase, and she says, that I'm giving that card to you and Marcus to work on the house. That's another $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been unemployed because I got laid off earlier this year. I got a text in the, uh, saying that I had exhausted all my unemployment funds. Okay. And so I had the last one. And I kept hearing my husband's voice saying, Helene, I don't care what's going on. You pay your tithes. All right. <laughs> and I looked at, the, I looked at the, the notice. I looked at the bank. And I said, God... You're faithful. Pastor talks about this all the time. Pastor says that he, he, he uh, God is the, God is the, uh, the increase. Yes. And I, I, I hadn't even wrote the check out. I was just in my head. I said, God, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I know I don't have any more income coming in on my side, mm. but I'm going to write my tithes out on this check. Before right. I could even write the check out, mm -hmm. I just thought about it. And I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the bank and ask for a loan or increase, whatever. Mm -hmm. Before I could even call the bank, before I could even go in to do what I needed to do to make sure my FICO score and everything was up, I said, let me just go check it. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even wrote my check out for my ties yet. I had just already made up my mind to do it. Mm -hmm. Went and checked my FICO score. It's up. Hadn't done uh, anything uh, different. Right. It's up. All right. Before I could call the bank and ask for an increase on my loan, I go and the money's already there on that account. <laughs> I wrote that ties check out and it's oh. in the, it's oh. in the <laughs> So I just want to thank God that yes, 
I, I'm listening to you, and I hear you. And I thank God that you listen to God, because I listen to you listening to him. All and right. the increase is just coming. Thank Praise you. God. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Woo! He's faithful. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, God. Glory to God. Praise God. Now, see, I couldn't have told all that. <laughs> Praise God. But I just thank God that she was encouraged to come up here Praise to God. share. When yeah. God blesses us, we should tell it. Yeah. But what yeah. was the moral of the whole story? <laughs> Give your time. That's it. Obey Give your, your time. And obey your husband. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. She gave the time. And look how the Lord is blessing them. Praise God. Come on, let's give God a praise one more time for the Hubbard family. Hallelujah. God is blessing and many, much more to come. You ain't seen nothing yet, girl. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. God's got something, and not only for the Hubbard family, for every member, every family in here. Yeah. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Yeah. But you just got to claim it and receive it and believe it and keep quoting and keep giving your tithe and offering. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together. We have one more praise report. Put your hands together. Let's receive this beautiful young lady, Sister Felicia Thomas. All right, Felicia. All right, Sister Felicia. Come on, Brother Morris. Come running, keeping up with you. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. She's eager, ready to tell it. Come on, tell it, girl. Tell it, tell it. So I just want to give honor to Pastor Douglas and Sister Douglas. I've been here 27 years. 27 years. Again, I, I started when I was two. But I was only two when I started. But <laughs> you got an altar right there. Anyway, okay. So I don't know, many of you know that I'm a nurse. And I've been a nurse since I got out of high school. I graduated high school in June 1988. Yeah. <laughs> and I became a nurse, and I actually worked for a long time as an LVN and became an associate degree nurse in 1994, two years before I had my son Ian. And I've worked with that degree, at that little associate's degree, all these years. And all of my BSN and MSN friends would tell me, you need to go get your degree. You're so smart. They have you doing all these projects. I thought, oh, I don't want to waste my time on that. Besides, I don't, wanna, I don't need to be a nurse. I'm going to look into something else. I'm going to become a teacher or something else. Nursing was starting to get old to me. One of my friends, um, I took on a job to be a director of nurses actually here in Lamarck. And many of you know, I live on the northeast side of town, the Beltway 8 side of town and I-10 East. And so I would drive all the way to Lamarck to be a director of nurses. I took, and I was making a very nice salary, so it was worth the drive. And then about two years later, my son had to go to kindergarten, and I didn't want him to go to daycare. So I decided I need to become a school nurse, because then I could work the same hours that he was in school, and I didn't have to pay child care. Mm -hmm. So when I decided to work, become a school nurse, I had to take a $20,000 pay cut. And I thought, well, daycare is almost that, so it's still worth it. <laughs> I, saw, yeah, I saw it in. Yeah. And when I took that twenty thousand um, dollar year day, uh, a year pay cut, I went to work for the school district. But I worked for um, the Head Start program. Many of you may have heard of Head Start, but it's a federally funded program for low income children and families. And before I knew it, I was in love with it, and I just couldn't leave. And so. About eight years into my career as a school nurse with Head Start, I got a call from the federal office, the national interim grantee, and they asked me to come and work for them and go all around the country and help all of their programs that were in trouble do what I was doing in Houston. So many of y'all know since 2006, I've been traveling all over the United States. I've worked in 28 states, including Hawaii and Puerto Rico, and I have loved every minute of it. <laughs> but it is a federal job. So those of you who work with the federal or state government know what I'm talking about. We don't make a lot of money. Right. However, one of my BSN friends told me, you still need to go back to school. So in August of 2012, I decided I'm going to try this school thing again. Uh, we'll see what happens. So I enrolled myself in an online course to take to get my bachelor's degree. I took a class here, a class there, and then two years after that, the girls came into my life. Things changed. Ian was graduating from high school. There was so much to do and all that stuff. So I just took a class here and a class there. But I told some of my best friends I need to hurry up and get this done because I have a feeling 
I'm going to need that bachelor's degree for some reason. I'm just going to need it. So this year I decided I'm going to buckle down. I'm going to finish this program because I should have been done three or four years ago. So I finished, just so you know. All right, all right, girl. And <laughs> so on top of trying to adopt two little girls as a single parent, put a kid in college, I went back to college. I finished my degree. I graduated September. I finished September 27th with honors. All right, all right, girl. And I'm having my graduation in December from the University of Texas. All so right. I'm very proud of my accomplishment. And having said that, I decided, well, why stop now? So in January, I've been accepted to as a student now, so I'll start back on my master's degree. So I ask all of y'all to pray for me because this was not what I intended to do. This was not in the plan. But for some reason, I just can't stop. The caveat to all this is I decided just to go get my bachelor's degree only for my personal development. My job did not require, as a matter of fact, the company I worked for didn't care that I had an associate's degree and everybody else had a bachelor's, PhD, and a, a master's and a PhD. I was probably the only employee out of 200 of us who didn't have a, a, a bachelor's degree. They didn't even know I was going to school. So I've been doing all this on my own, paying for it and everything. La on October the 1st, the federal office set down a new set of regulations. This is the first time they've ever rewritten the Head Start regulations. And Head Start's been around since the 1960s. The regulations were written in 1960. So for the first time ever, Congress and the Senate sat down and decided to rewrite the federal regulations for Head Start. They took, a, they take effect, they took effect October 1st. In those regulations, they stated that a person who holds the position that I used to hold before I came to work for the federal office, they must now start with a bachelor's degree. Yeah. That becomes effective November the 7th of oh, this year. <laughs> so I know, yeah. I know that this was my time because I was not intending to do this. I didn't want to do it and I didn't need to. But it's just, just so happens that I finish a month before the regulations come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't even need it. However, now, I thought I didn't need it. Now, when they ask for everyone's credentials, I can say with all certainty and pride yes. that I'm one of those people who finally has an undergraduate degree. All right, girl. <laughs> all right, girl. Praise right, God. Right, come girl. on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Uh -huh. my God. Oh, thank God yeah. for being led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Sometimes it's not what you want to do, but it's what you need to do, and yeah. not knowing that she was going to need that. Oh, yeah. praise God. Come on, let's give God a praise one more time. Hallelujah. For both of our praise reports this morning. What an awesome praise report from both of our members this morning. Yeah. Praise God. Well, we have one more special announcement. Praise God. And I want you to put your hands together and receive this beautiful young lady. Special presentation this morning, Sister Kiara Redman. All right, Kiara. Praise God, praise God. Glory to God. All right, Kiara. Praise God. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'll be brief, because I know we hungry. So. <laughs> so I'll be brief. OK, so um, today I just wanted to make an announcement about a very special woman to all of us. Um, and that is none other than our own Sister Douglas. Thank you. Yeah. Being someone who's interested in science and medicine myself, when I think of Sister Douglas, I think of the lungs. The lungs sit on the inside of our chest, on either side of our heart, which you can think of as Pastor Douglas. The lungs and the heart must work together as a team to oxygenate the cells and the tissues of the body. So they're a team. They work in tandem with one another. The heart pumps the blood. The lungs put the oxygen to it. The heart pumps the blood. The lungs put the oxygen into it. Um, but see, the lungs, Sister, the lungs. <laughs> they're they're very they're vital organs. They function to maintain homeostasis and equilibrium within our bodies. They protect us against infection and outside invaders. And of course, they aid us in taking in oxygen so we can breathe and we don't die. Um, 
When the Bible references the lungs, it talks about, on several instances, the breath of life. And it talks about expanding our lungs so we can praise. See, I, I don't know about y'all, but all of that reminds me of Sister Douglas. Just like the lungs, she keeps us in check and she keeps us balanced. She, she asks us questions to make sure we're doing well. She prays for us a lot of the time when we don't even ask her to. Um, she protects us, whether it's with her helpful advice or turning on that maternal instinct that a lot of you have, I know. <laughs> and just like when we take a breath, after we talk to her, have a conversation with her, um, or simply just give her a hug, we feel refreshed, we feel rejuvenated and relaxed. Um, I, I say all this to say that she's important and she's vital, not only to Pastor and to Ashley, but she's vital to us and to this church family. Um, so, she deserves to be celebrated and to be honored. So I'm up here today to invite all of you to join us after church November 6th to celebrate her for her birthday and to just, you know, shower her with your encouraging words, with your love offerings, with your monetary gifts, with whatever it is, with your hugs, because we all know she loves hugs, yeah. because she deserves it. She deserves it. So I expect to see all of you there November 6th. Um, and that's it. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Kier. Oh, and now will you please stand? <laughs> As we welcome our pastor. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord. All right. Thank you, girl. <laughs> All right, Karen. Excellent job. Excellent job. Praise God. All right. Let's turn that off. You got it. Praise God. Praise God. Can you all see what the Lord is doing? He is blessing God's people. Giving them what they need. When you call him Soas, that's what he becomes, Soas. Hallelujah. And then you see our homegrown babies. That's, that's homegrown. That's raised up in, the, in this church from little. Now it's grown and almost gone. <laughs> Praise God. So thank God for what he's doing in their lives and uh, Felicia's family's life, Amen. people of God, that's what God does. Yes. My wife is sharing about somebody that paid for her grocery and another come to me right during, during the greeting time and said somebody put $40 towards her, her groceries. Oh, no. So, you know, the just grocery is just food this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The food just keep on coming. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's time to go, it's time to go get some. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you have a new job title. It's called intercessor. Somebody needs your prayers. And God's house shall be called a house of prayer. That's our priority in this house is to pray. And we're going to do that. We're going to make a difference in the world. Amen. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to thee. The Lord live upon you and give you peace, grace, mercy, and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto you. Amen. Have one of you eat afternoon and be way out. D, DC and DB. Don't blame, don't criticize, don't complain, and don't compare. Praise God. Praise God.